Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hasham Ali Khan. So last video I have completed two problems on t-test. Now in this video, third and fourth problem I am going to explain you. If you have joined in between, you may not be able to understand. That's why my suggestion to you, first watch the first video in which first and second problem I have explained you in detail. So without understanding the first and second problem, you cannot come and join in third problem. You will not be able to understand. So go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject statistics for management, select the videos regarding t-test, watch the first video, be acquainted with the procedure of hypothesis testing in t-test and then come to this video. So I think every uh, viewer, they have uh, you have taken the printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Without having the problems, you cannot understand the solutions. Always keep the problems ready. Now take a screenshot of the solution of third and fourth problem, then I'll explain all the points. Come on, see the problem number three. <clears throat> a tobacco processor certified that his cigarettes contained no more than 21 milligram of nicotine on the average. So a cigarette manufacturing company, so a tobacco processor company, it is claiming that the cigarettes does not contain more than 21 milligram of nicotine. So uh, a random sample of 25 cigarettes was analyzed by an independent medical researcher and found to have a mean of 22.6 milligram of nicotine with a standard deviation of 3 milligram. At the significance level of 0 0.001, do the data provide enough evidence to assert that the processor certificate is false? Company is claiming that every cigarette will contain no more than 21 milligram of nicotine. One medical researcher, he wants to find out whether the company's contention is true or false. So he has taken a sample of 25 cigarettes. So it's a small sample, less than 30. So we apply T-test. So he has taken 25 cigarettes and found the average nicotine content. He found that the average nicotine is 22.6 milligram. The company is contending that no more than 21, but the sample is giving 22.6. So apparently it looked like that the company's contention is false. It is more than 21, but here company is claiming only 21. So we can outrightly reject the company's claim, but we have to prove, we have to apply the steps of sampling to find out whether the difference is significant or insignificant. If the difference is very insignificant, we can accept the company's claim. But if the difference is very much significant difference, then we reject the company's claim and we can contend that company is false. The cigarette, the nicotine content is more than 21 milligram. So we have to apply the test. So the mean is 22.6 milligram and the standard deviation is 3 milligram and the significance level is given 0 0.001 1% 1 level of significance that's it these are the contents of the problem see carefully we are given mu mu means population mean the population mean is less than or equal to 21 milligram the company claims that all the cigarettes will have not more than 21 milligram of nicotine not more than ka matlab less than or equal to less than or equal to so mu is less than or equal to 21 milligram n sample size how many cigarettes he has taken 25 cigarettes then x bar sample mean 22.6 milligram of nicotine sample standard deviation 3 milligram and alpha 0 0.01 these are the information given in the problem null hypothesis Null ka matlab no difference. Whatever company claims that is correct. First we believe that whatever company is contending that is correct. No more than 21. That means less than or equal to 21 milligram. There is no significant difference between population mean sample mean. The company's claim is true. 
that is the null height. Alternative opposite. Our sample shows more. 22.6 our sample is showing. That means company's claim is false. More than 21 milligram nicotine is there in the cigarette. So here alternative hypothesis mu greater than 21 milligram. When it is greater than it is a right tail test. Already I have discussed in the previous videos. That's why I am stressing on the students. If you want the complete knowledge, watch all the videos one after another. If you join in between, you will not be able to understand completely. Now, there is a significant difference between population mean and sample mean. The company's claim is false. The company's claim is false. Nicotine content is more than 21 milligram. In a null hypothesis, we have accepted. The company's claim we have accepted that the cigarette co nicotine content in the cigarette is less than or equal to 21 mg. Alternative hypothesis, no. Nicotine content is more than 21 mg. The company's claim is false. So two hypotheses we have framed. Now level of significance. Alpha is 0 0.01 given in the problem. Then degree of freedom. V is equal to N minus 1. N is 25. So 25 minus 1, 24 degree of freedom. Next, test statistic. Since the sample is small one, we apply t-test. The formula for t is x bar minus mu divided by capital S by root n. So capital S is the unbiased estimate of the population standard deviation. Already in the previous video I have explained. So capital S, how to find out capital S? n divided by n, n minus 1 into s square small s small s is the sample standard deviation 3 now substitute 25 divided by 25 minus 1 into 3 square so if you square 3 3 3 is a 9 9 into 25 divided by 24 under root so after root you are going to get 3.062 final answer the so capital is 3.062 now substitute x bar 22.6 mu is 21 divide by s Capital S 3.062 divided by root 25. Root 25 is 5. So 22.6 minus 21, it is 1.6 divided by 3.062 divided by 5. We get 0.6124. So final answer is 2.61. 2.61 is the computed value of Z, uh, value of T. And this computed value should be compared with the critical value. The table value of T at 1% level of significance for V is equal to 24 for right tail test. Right tail means positive value. Left tail means negative value. Here we have right tail. That's why I'm taking plus 2.49. How you got 2.49? I told you you have to refer the T table. This T table already I have provided in the link under my description. So two PDFs are there. One PDF is for problems, the other PDF for T-table. So if you don't have, you can refer any textbook, you will have T-table. Or in Google also, you can get T-table. So in this T-table, the degree of freedom is 24. Degree of freedom, 24. So against 24, in the line of 24, 0 0.01. So 24, 0.01, you will get 2.80. 2.80 but don't take 2.80 it's a two tail value if you want one tail value one column before one column before that so 2.80 before that you will have 2.49 so 2.49 is the critical value so here 2.49 I have to so critical reason lies for t greater than or equal to 2.49 any value which is more than 2.49 will fall in rejection region. Any value which is less than 2.49 will fall in acceptance region. Now our computed value is 2.61. So 2.61 is greater than 2.49. So it falls in rejection region. This computed value will fall in rejection region. We reject the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis we reject. Alternative hypothesis we accept. In alternative hypothesis, we said there is significant difference between population and sample mean. The nicotine content is more than 21 mg. The company's claim is false. 
that we will accept. So here, the computed value of T 2.61 is greater than the critical value 2.49. So it falls in rejection region. Now hypothesis rejected. The company's claim is not true. The nicotine content is more than 21 milligram. That's it. This is the end of third problem. Now see the fourth one. A fertilizer mixing machine is set to give 12 kilogram of nitrate for every quintal bag of fertilizer. Fertilizers are packed in a bag. Bag contains one quintal. Quintal means 100 kilogram. Quintal consists of 100 kilogram. So one bag contains 100 kilogram of fertilizer. In that 100 kilogram, 12 kilogram is the nitrate. In 100 kilogram, 12 kilogram is the nitrate. This nitrate will be filled by the machine. The machine is set such that every bag must have 12 kilogram of nitrate. 10 100 kilogram bags are examined. In a 10 bags are examined. Each bag contain one quintal. One quintal means 100 kilogram. In that 100 kilogram, it has to mix 12 kilogram nitrate. The percentage of nitrate are as follows. First bag we have 11 kilogram. Actually, it must have 12 kilogram. But randomly there will be some fluctuation. In some bags it will be less than 12. Some bags it will be more than 12. So first bag 11 kilogram nitrate. Second bag 14 kilogram nitrate. Third bag 13 kilogram nitrate. Like that it is fluctuating. Is the reason to believe that the machine is defective? Now ultimately it is asking you whether the machine is working in proper order or defective. Proper order means every bag must have 12 kilogram. Defective means the machine is not filling 12 kilogram. Sometimes less than 12, sometimes more than 12. The difference between previous problem and this problem is sample mean and sample standard deviation not given. Previous three problems we have done sample mean, sample standard deviation were given. Now here it is not given. We have to calculate. So how to calculate sample mean and sample standard deviation? Calculation of sample mean and sample standard deviation. First serial number, sample number, 10 samples are there. First sample 11 kilogram, second sample 14 kilogram, third sample 13. These are the weight of nitrates, weight in kilogram of nitrates. So total summation x 125 kilogram in 10 bags. In 10 bags 125 kilogram. So mean x bar is equal to summation x by l 125 by 10 12.5 So x bar the sample mean is 12.5 right now d d stands for deviations this deviations we require for standard deviation so <coughs> d is equal to x minus x bar so x minus x bar is 12.5 so 11 minus 12.5 minus 1.5 14 minus 12.5, 1.5. 13 minus 12.5, 0 0.5. 12 minus, minus 12.5 is minus 0 0.5. Like this deviations. Square the deviations. 1.5 square. Minus into minus will become plus. So all squared item will be positive. So 1.5 into 1.5, 2.25. Similarly, 1.5 into 1.5, 2.25. Square all this and take the total. Summation d square you get 10.5. So calculations over. Now mean we have calculated. Standard deviation formula. Standard deviation is equal to summation d square by n under root. This is the formula for standard deviation. So summation d square 10.5 divided by 10. n is equal to 10 under root. So after root you are getting 1.0247. 1.0247 is the standard deviation of samples. Sample mean 12.5, sample standard deviation 1.0247. Previous problem sample mean, sample standard deviations were given. In this problem not given. So we have to calculate by preparing the table. So by preparing the table, sample mean, sample standard deviation. Now we have mu, population mean. So every bag must contain how much nitrate? 12 kilogram given in the problem. That is the population mean, mu. Sample mean we got 12.5 here and n is equal to 10 sample size 10 small s sample standard deviation 1.0247 Now first we calculate capital S 
unbiased estimate of population stratification n divided by n minus 1 into s square n is 10 10 divided by 10 minus 1 into s s is 1.0247 square so first you square it into 10 divided by 9 under root so after root you are getting 1.08 so 1.08 is the capital s now we will follow the steps first null hypothesis ho mu is equal to 12 kilogram null means no difference there is no difference between sample mean and population mean the machine is working properly that means every bag contains 12 kilogram only whatever deviations are there are very insignificant deviations that is the null no significant difference between population mean and sample mean the machine is working properly that is the null alternative hypothesis the machine is not working properly sometime less sometime more that's why i'm taking two tail test mu not equal to 12 why I am taking not to not equal to 12? Because some bags it is less than 12 and some bag it is more than 12. So here mu not equal to 12, two tail test. There is significant difference between population mean and sample mean. The machine is not working properly. Now two hypotheses we have set. Now level of significance 0 0.05, nothing given in the problem, we assumed. Then degree of freedom, V is equal to N minus 1. 10 minus 1, 10 minus 1, 9. So degree of freedom 9. Test statistic. So since the sample is small, the test statistic t is equal to x bar minus mu by s by root n. All the values we have. X bar is 12.5. Mu is 12. Here we have written. Capital S, we have calculated capital S 1.08. Divide by n, root n, root 10. So here 0 0.5 divided by 1.08, root after root root 10 we will get 3.162 so 0 0.5 divided by 1.08 divided by 3.162 so 3 final answer t 1.46 is the computed value of t now this computed value should be compared with the critical value critical region the table value of t at 5% level for v is equal to 9 for two tail test is 2.26 now you can refer the table in the table 9 degree of freedom to row 9 degree of freedom row 9 in row 9 under 0 0.05 to row 9 under 0 0.05 you will find 2.26 same column because two tail test if it is one tail test one column before you should take if two tail test same column you should take the same column 2.26 the plus or minus 2.26 because it is two tail test that's why i'm writing plus or minus but our computed value is positive so we will not consider minus we consider positive value the so positive value 2.26 here positive value 1.46 that means 1.46 is less than 2.26 so it falls in acceptance region i'll show it through diagram This is the t-test, two tail test. So critical region will lie on both sides. This is t minus 2.26 and this is t is equal to plus 2.26. 2.26. Our computed value is plus. So don't consider this minus. We consider only plus. So plus 2.26 or more will go to rejection below 2.26 acceptance so here it is acceptance region our computer value is 1.46 so 1.46 lie here 1.46 will lie before 2.26 so it falls in acceptance region acceptance region means null hypothesis is accepted so what you have written in null hypothesis here mu 12 kilogram no significant difference between population the machine is working properly that's it. This is the end of problem number four. So totally four problems I've explained on t-test. Inshallah, we'll continue the next problem in the next video.